Okay, guys, shall we start? <coughs> so, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, last session of the day. Pretty exhausted, I think, everybody. So, here we are talking about automate testing with BHAT, Selenium, PhantomJS, and Nightward.js. So, speakers, who are the speakers? Uh, my name is Nikhil Sukul. I am Senior Drupal Architect in 5G Solutions, a company based in uh, Pune as well as US. US. Um, I am working in uh, Drupal domain for last 17 years. No, my overall experience 17 years plus. I am working in Drupal domain for last 9 years and so. I have with me uh, Senior Developer, Drupal Senior Developer, Gaurav. Hi everyone. My name is Gaurav Ashpe. I am a senior developer at Fancy Solution. I am working with uh, Drupal is more than five years. So here we go. So guys, uh, we all are here talking about testing. So let's see what happens when computer is not invented. How we used to find the bugs. So when there were no computers, there were no bugs in computers. So everybody was having a plain slate. Anybody found any bug? No. Nobody found any bug because there were no computers at all. Okay? Now then we started building computers and we started writing the code for it. And when we started writing the code, bugs started coming. <laughs> and bugs started coming with full force based on the quality of code what we write. Okay. And then we deploy testers. We get the testers. And what the best thing about testers? See, the tester should not, is not, not on his desk. So we can deploy code. Hurry up. <laughs> we don't have the villain on our plate, so we can always deploy and see the code. And that is not code, not told in the job interview of any tester. Then this kind of situation will happen for a tester. Okay. And this is what happens when you are in support mode. And what you get is somebody in the middle, late show stopper, kind of a person who is a big tester headache, a kind of a bug with any tester can get. Whenever you are in a support mode and you get a late night call from a product manager that there is a big bug coming on the website. And this is what is said by a product manager or whoever managed the account that actually it is not a bug. It is an undocumented feature. <laughs> okay. So these are what we have for testing. So what is testing? So in general, testing is something where we are finding well how something works. So define what something works. What something works means what is being expected. So what is expected as per the software which is being developed, as per the requirement of the software, what is expected if the testing is a process of evaluating that particular process and give it you the expected output. So how we do testing? We do testing like this. Uh, this is a very good slide. You can actually take this slide and give to a client and you will be very happy. See, receive the client documentation, prepare the list of scenarios to test, and then we send across to the client. The client will say, okay, the scenarios are correct. If they are not correct, we keep on iterating. If it is correct, it will go to prepare a detailed test case plans. And then again it will go to the client, then the client will say, no, it's not working. Then again you will keep on iterating, otherwise we'll say yes, and then you will say, voila, my test case is created, and now I can execute the test plan. This is what, uh, generally, how to do writing a test case and how to receive a documentation from the client, and then you go to the execution phase of a test plan. And why we do testing? What is the requirement why we do testing? So, testings are good when you want to find a defect in development phases. Um, so people will say, yeah, we do unit testing. But remember, unit testing is a part of test. We have to do unit testing. We have to do testing for whatever code we are writing. And it actually improves a lot for whatever functionality we are developing. It makes customer reliability and the satisfaction and for the application. So a customer becomes more confident with you he understands that there are less bugs in your application, so he becomes more and more confident that my whatever outcome will be coming from the application will be very reliable, very quality friendly. And 
while you are testing, please also test for the performance of the application, for the performance of the software. So testing is required when you do performance testing for an application. And in, while doing development for an application, if you are not doing testing, it is very expensive once you find it after the development is being happened. And you all agree that once the development happened, if you have a fixed bit project, it is delivered to the client, and the client come back with 10 different bugs, it is not in your scope for that cost. It is all bared by you because you haven't tested it properly on the first place. So generally, there are three types of testing we can categorize. Functional, non-functional, and maintenance. So functional means you have various kind of testing like unit testing, integration, smoke, acceptance testing, localization, globalization, interoperability, and so on. There's big numbers for it. Non-functional, which generally happens for every project. It should happen for every project, if possible. Performance, endurance, load testing, volume testing, scalability testing, usability testing of the application, and so on. And then the last is maintenance. There you have regression testing and maintenance-based testing, which generally happens based on the support plan. Now, who will test your application? Somebody from this group? I don't know. Okay. From here? No, I don't think so. From here? Yes, there are few people from here. <laughs> Can you recognize the picture? <laughs> Where it is taken from? It's Zupincon, Dublin. So there are some testers here. In this picture. Who will be doing testing? So let's again categorize testing with respect to execution. So, there are two types of execution. Now everybody is getting excited. We are coming to the real thing. This is what the session is all about. Manual testing and automated testing. Believe me, I am not going to cover manual testing at all. I am only going to cover automated testing. But yeah, let's compare it first. What is the difference? Or where the automation testing can be useful than manual testing? So, automation testing is very useful with regression testing. Now, think about a manual tester. I have a sprint going on, and after a sprint, he write a test cases, and he did manual testing for 500 test cases. After two weeks, again a sprint need to happen, a hot fix maybe. And then the product manager said, can you please execute 500 again? And this guy will say, I will take a beer first and then I will think about it. Because again I have to think of 500 test cases manually. So let's use automation testing there. And since he is doing manual testing, definitely it's a human testing. So it will be slower. It won't be very fast. Whereas if you made an automated testing script, it will be far more faster. It is, uh, automated testing is very good for build verification testing or in short form known as BVT. The initial cost of automated testing, if you create any automated testing framework using the tools, it might be high. You might have to uh, invest some money or invest some time for it. But after some time, when you run it, it will be very cost effective. <coughs> so let's talk about automated testing for this session. This is what happens when automated testing is actually from Stone Age. You can see that. It comes to the computer age and it's still doing automation. <laughs> The same way. Okay, so automated testings are two types you can categorize. One is the real browser testing. I don't think I need to tell about what real browser testing means. Everybody does real browser testing. You create an application, you open a browser known as C H R O M E. Guys, it is Chrome. You open Chrome, you open Firefox, you open R E. Don't open RE, it's, it's bad. So <laughs> let's think of Chrome or Firefox. And those are generally used for real browser testing. It's a no-brainer. You create an application, you create a website, open the browser, do testing on it. You find your test there. You can see whether there is an error, and you fix it. Then you have headless browsers. Headless means no head. <laughs> so headless means the, the browser testing which doesn't require any graphical user interface. Now, this can be automated because it is not requiring you to open a browser. 
and you can actually do the testing or writing a script in headless which can do the testing for you. The examples are Phantom JS, Zombie JS and all. Oh, I love zombies, yeah, really do. So what is the difference, what is the difference between headless and uh, real browsers? Headless are faster than real browsers, definitely, because I am not opening Chrome, clicking on the button and doing it. It's actually ho <coughs> happening everything in the background. And you can actually, you can reduce the time of opening the images or CSS and all. It will perform the actions in the background itself. Headless browsers are not representing real users. Yeah, so uh, I won't be writing a headless browser with the 500 users name. I'm only writing a headless browser with one functionality and say that please log into a particular system, check login is working or XYZ is working or not and give me the test case output of it. I won't be saying that Jack will be logging or XYZ will be logging. I can give, I don't have to give any names for it. So there's no real user who's represented for <coughs> headless browser testing. Array detection in, by the way, in browsers, are real browsers are easy peasy because it is visual. You're actually looking at the browser and you can find out very easily where the bug is. Whereas in the case of headless, you have to wait for the reports to come out. So when the headless browser will do the background testing and the reports will come out, then you will see that there were 10 test cases which were failed based on whatever functionality you have asked for. And headless browser doesn't support <coughs> Ajax. I mean, Ajax are browser based. So headless doesn't have a browser. So doesn't support Ajax. Anybody has idea what is this? Anybody? Yes? Okay, very close. <laughs> it is Selenium Firefox plugin. So it's a Selenium IDE which is being used for Firefox and it is good for those guys who want to start Selenium IDE or you want to start what Selenium does actually. If you install a Firefox plugin of Selenium, you can actually record all your functionality there. It will generate scripts in the background and you can run the script again. It will record all the actions there. To the beginner, this is a very good tool. So what is Selenium? So Selenium is a web driver. It's a collection of open source API and it is used to automate your testing web application. And above all, it is platform independent. It is one of the, I think, first automated testing web driver which is being used, very popular web driver and it is very successful in its automated testing domain. How Selenium web driver works? So they are actually having, it is, it is actually working in Java, so Selenium is absolutely based on Java. So it has their own interfaces which are written in Java. A class need to implement those interfaces. A class can be a Chrome class, a class, a driver of a Firefox driver. And those classes which are being implemented on interfaces can have their own functionality. So they, the Selenium web driver gives you an interface from which you can actually create, based on your browser, different interfaces. You can download Selenium from this link. It will give you a Java file, which means you need to have Java to run Selenium there. Um, Gaurav, can you show that? Sure. So I'm going to start Selenium server. <coughs> So Gaurav going to start the Selenium server for you guys and show how Selenium starts. So these are the basic command which is java hyphen jar the driver name. One so you can see uh, jar is a command to extract the jar and it will run in a particular port. So when you hit enter it will actually say blah 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 and say Selenium server is run up and running. So now Selenium is running for you. Right? Okay. Let's go back. Sorry guys, we didn't test it this, so it happened. Okay, so next talk about B hat. So <coughs> I think I, I heard about B hat when I was working in Drupal itself because when there was a module for B hat in Drupal, that was the first time I learned about B hat and, and it was really amazing when I thought that I can write something in plain English rather than writing a JavaScript code there. 
So BHAT is an open source behavior driven development framework which is written in PHP. And it's actually use a special language, English like language known as Dhirkin. So it's a business readable, specially behavior description and is, it doesn't have any logic, it's more like a plain English. So think of a tester who doesn't understand any programming language but know how to write test cases in plain English and he wants to use an application, so he can use BHAT. He can write test cases directly in plain English in BHAT which will be converted into a machine language using PHP which can be used by BHAT to execute the test cases. This is an example of Gherkin, how to write a test case. So there are something like feature which is there in Gherkin, then you have scenario, some intermediate business situation, then given and when these are the keywords, you can use whatever you want and you keep on writing scenarios and based on the scenario, the PHP will generate <coughs> the script for you automatically. The then next comes is Mink. So B hat is a testing. So B hat is a testing tool. Now Mink is a simulator for that B hack. So B hat will give you an idea, this is an English specific language, I can use Gherkin, I can write test cases. Now how to execute test cases? So those test cases will be executed if you use BHAT with Mink. So Mink is a simulator for BHAT to execute it on the browser. What is a browser simulator or browser emulator? It's an abstraction layer. So it's not actually a real browser, but actually giving you the feel it is running in the browser and running it the same way in any browser the things will work. So Mink supports with respect to browser both headless as well as in browser capability. It is also uh, having a capability with single consistency and it is written in PHP 5.3 plus. You can download Mink and install with BHAT. The link is available here. So let's show about Mink. So the first thing what we are showing here is B hat with mink with the with headless that is there is no browser interaction. So once it run it what happening is it is actually giving a scenario the scenario is written is Gherkin and what is happening he is actually giving a uh, I am on slash that is the URL when I will follow login which is a button I will fill username and password these are the username and password admin at rate 123 is my own gmail password please use it <laughs> um, then we say login and then we say log out and my account this is a scenario it will attempt then again it will attempt another scenario with wrong credentials bogus pass <coughs> what a wrong credential then again login and again my account so it will say that for two scenarios we are two passed it will take 14 steps it will execute everything and give you the output now this is headless part of bhat another one. Real now, B hat with real browser. So it's opening the browser in the background. It is logging the same credentials. Now, both the credentials are written and then it stops. It was very quick. If you guys have seen it, I can't slow it down. But what happened was, whatever was in the headless scenario is now being run by B hat using the browser. So the headless scenario works very well when you have a continuous integration engine like Jenkins or anything where you can want to see the pass and fail and BHAT scenario where you want to execute the test cases on real browser and check it out how it works there. Yeah. <coughs> so next is Phantom JS. Now what is Phantom JS? Um, Phantom JS is a headless browser. So headless browser is means that it doesn't have a browser, it's only a headless browser. But it also require give you a JavaScript API to write code to execute few things in that headless browser. So Phantom is, you can download Phantom from here if you want to. And Phantom is good for <laughs> Headless website testing, 
again phantom js doesn't have its own test runner which means when you're executing phantom js not going to give you pass or fail it will actually execute few things like you can execute the test cases if you want to you can do a screen capture if you want to you can actually select the html element using phantom js and see how it is working and since it doesn't have any test framework it is only used for those kind of purposes but okay let's see phantom first then we'll go for casper so let's see what phantom can do Casper element JS. Yes. That's it. Okay. So, can you open the folder of Phantom? So, what happened here was okay. Let's for for the people to see whether it is really working. Let us try again. Let's delete all these two images. We are trying to create the screen capture the functionality with Phantom JS. <coughs> now if I go to the folder again it is being executed again can you show the code of phantom JS from where we have done it so here what is happening in phantom JS you can see there are few objects available there page dot open page dot evaluate these are JavaScript API available within phantom dot JS and what we are trying to do is we are trying to grab the elements from query selector like clicking the element then give the name give the password and click on submit and it will again render the login page whatever is being output here we are taking the screenshot of that and putting in the same folder can we show the screenshot so this is what happened when you logged in in admin and admin credentials it took the screenshot of that and the second one and this is what has happened after you logged in so one is before login it took the screenshot took in the, in the credentials and one is after login this is what phantom js is doing with just javascript api now you might have seen i haven't used selenium here i have only used phantom js so phantom js doesn't require selenium to run this thing it can run it standalone by itself <coughs> okay yes Now, what is Casper? Now, Casper JS is built on top of Phantom JS. And what is capable of? This can be used as a test running tool. When you run Casper JS, it uses the same kind of Phantom JS APIs. On top of it, it can actually give you the perception of pass and fail. Currently, what we did, we just did the screenshot, right? But we want to know after admin whether it was done pass or a fail scenario, you can capture using Casper JS. Okay. So here what's happening, I clicked on login, uh, Casper underscore login JS, it is actually using same phantom JS script but on top of it, it is having its own wrapper for Casper. Once I execute it, it's giving me the scenarios, pass, 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 and three were passed, it took so much amount of time. This is being done using Casper JS, which is run on top of phantom of JS. Now show the script. Now using Casper JS, if you see, they are using similar kind of assert exist. These are the search exists which are available in Casper JS, but the rest everything are based on the API available in Phantom JS. So based on that, we are running it, and based on this, we are getting the output of a test case. Now, lately, uh, I actually went through a session which was given in one of the Drupal con for nightwatch.js. So there are so many other tools which are available. Nightwatch.js is also one of them. Now what Nightwatch does is actually based on Node.js. It's an end-to-end -end testing solution. And it has a big web driver API. All these are good. 
but the major aspect for nightwatch.js is it is used for real browser testing it is not headless like casper js phantom js which are headless nightwatch.js is real browser testing it is used along with selenium this is the architecture of nightwatch.js so it has a test script it has a test runner it takes the selenium and the way we were talking about the web drivers of selenium it takes like that runs based on the web browser so it's a real browser testing framework i'm going to show demo now let's talk see the nightwatch demo so before that nightwatch once you install it gives its own executable nightwatch then you can give the command for t for drupal login t is for testing file. for testing then drupal login conf js whatever you have created then c json is the file the c stand for configuration and c stand for configuration <coughs> so it's a real browser testing it will open the browser it will again login once login it will say okay this is already being passed then it's going to second section it's going to give the bad username password and it will give the assert and then it becomes a total so it's a real browser testing with respect to nightwatch.js now let's see the code of nightwatch so for nightwatch you can write something like this we have given pause deliberately so that we can show you clearly what's happening but in night browser it is very much uh, javascript language it is being written and it has a very simple way of uh, writing the code it grabs the thing the way uh, you can see elements are getting grab of html and then it is being executed okay so all this what i have just told you it's bit confusing few of them are headless few of them are real browser testing few of them are both which is what what to use and when <coughs> so let me go through it okay this will be okay. we'll start slowly <laughs> okay let's start one by one now pay attention here it's a gif okay i can't control it so 1 2 3 this is headless browser i am giving a notion this is real browser okay they are dancing <laughs> be hat plus main plus selenium all goes to real browser testing okay be hat plus main plus selenium goes to real browser testing if you cup together night watch plus selenium goes to real browser testing they are anywhere real browsers third b hat plus mink plus go to driver goes to headless they are again headless okay fourth one phantom and casper they are headless right b hat plus mink plus selenium plus phantom goes to headless okay come on <laughs> yeah <laughs> done now go down if you want i can try one more time just for your information let's try again okay hello uh. <laughs> headless browser and real browser please dance <laughs> okay we had plus mink plus selenium goes to real browser testing okay yeah got it next night watch plus selenium goes to real browser testing because night watch is real browser testing okay third we had plus mink plus go to driver goes to headless okay 
Fourth, Phantom and Casper, headless, they don't have any head. B hat, plus mink, plus selenium, plus phantom, goes to headless. Shoe. Come on in. Yeah. That's it. Okay? Yep. Absolutely, I really like the observation. So there, Phantom is already a browser, Selenium is already a browser. Yeah, web so web a web driver. So you can either use Phantom or use Selenium. If you install both, doesn't matter. It will become a headless browser. Very good observation. Yeah. Uh, because I have a covered PHP unit. <laughs> Whatever I have covered, I just took that. For that, I have another session which I will give an afterwards about PHP unit and simple unit and other things. But I will touch, uh, touch separately for it. Yeah. Yep. So I think we keep up the same way the way Drupal.org keep up with the latest version. We need to keep up updating the drivers whenever as soon as they come. But in my opinion, uh, based on whatever we have seen so far and what we are using, we are going towards more on JavaScript based browsers now, Phantom JS and all rather than only dependent on Selenium. Because Selenium is a Java based browser and require a Java based setup for everything. If you go for something which doesn't require a Java based setup and you can still do the work, it will be better. And this way we are more work, working towards Phantom JS and, and all the others yes, which, which are, doesn't require Selenium as necessity. <coughs> The, yeah. Um, if you run the same test through your headless browser and the same test through, or, uh, through a real browser, would you expect to get the same results or are there distinct differences? Okay, so we did that. Uh, if you have seen, we run the same test in headless as well as the same test in the browser. Yeah. The difference was the, there is a message for wrong user which was coming. I was giving a bad password that was coming within the browser itself. Whereas in the case of headless, it will be a pass or fill scenario there. You can see in the command line. What's, what's the difference? Uh, yeah, I understand. Don't worry, when the YouTube will come, just pause it and slowly go through it. It will be easy. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think the main reason which, which we are tempted to go for headless is the complexity of a project and when we have to do regression testing a lot. When you, and I still believe that we should do the first round of testing as manual for, for UI, if possible, because you see the visual changes very clearly. Okay. <laughs> 
otherwise i think uh, it will be really good if we can do the manual testing or the way it is being done opening the browser and closing the browser thing <coughs> but using jenkins as a continuous engine it is better to use headless there and then you get the test cases and see the pass and fail what is happening there my vision for this session was because when i was keep on trying to get various headless as well as the real browsers sessions across the board for various places in internet and never find any session which is talking all four about it it is always one single place for one single technology and i was really getting confused so i installed four and say i will give all four <laughs> gift from my side be happy yeah yep Yeah, so uh, I think if there is a session of night watch in Drupal camp, Drupal con, which has happened by that person, if you see that, that he is actually uh, using night watch to call browser stack from an API, that is possible because they are real browser testing, and then from the API you can execute it there and you get the set, uh, check results. So I, we have tried that and it works with respect to that. So I think that's the way it works for browser stack. Uh, no, it's not so complicated at all. It's, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, web protocol browser. Yeah. But but it's a night watch, right? So night watch was using uh, an API from browser stack. Yeah, Selenium via which is actually doing that and getting the things. No, I haven't tested with API. I haven't tried it, but I will do. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you.